So, how are you gonna eat? I mean, ageless women, women over 45, begin to do paleo, keto, high carb, low carb, low fat, high, I mean, how do you know what you need? Well, today on this episode of Lean Healthy Ageless, I've got an amazing expert, Patty <laughs> Milligan, my good friend of many, many years, but she's also, she's a PhD in nutrition. I mean, this woman <laughs> is amazing, but she's gonna give us this simple little test that help us, helps us understand our carbohydrate metabolism, but really that whole macronutrient, protein, carbohydrate, fat, what is best for you on this episode of Lean Healthy Ageless. And if you're a woman 45 plus, who just desires to have your highest vitality, your best health, your best body, no matter what your age, you are in the right spot. Okay, Patty, all right. again. <laughs> I love this topic because I think I all of us would love a roadmap. Like, how do I know my body and what's the best way to eat for it? And when I discovered, uh, and I would look up this researcher, I think he is on to everything. His name is Dr. Sharon Malone. He's a Sharon PhD, Malone. Yes, and he's a PhD MD, so shout out. Thank you, Dr. Sharon. He said, I really want to put in people's hands the ability to understand their DNA and understand how it is that they can eat for their body. And I just recently finished my doctorate, so I did it on taste buds, which led me to saliva. <laughs> and I need to say, she was one of the one of two key advisors on our Eat, Let's Thrive diet book yeah. <laughs> that Robin and I wrote, and we couldn't have done it without you. Well, so I tell you, you I'm are so glad. on the cutting edge, Patty. But you'll know Patty's <laughs> personality. She makes it so fun. All this <laughs> stuff that's so complicated. You are so good at finding ways to make it simple. And of course, you not only your own research, but you find people like Dr. Sharon, Sharon Malone. Malone. <laughs> And we'll put links to his books and everything yes. in the notes but that help us have these tools. Well, and I just figure, like, I agree. Thank you. I mean, one is I just feel like all of us just desire to understand and decode the body's messages. So my desire is always to search out the researchers that are trying to find that. And with saliva, and I don't know if you all know, but mark this down. It's pretty surprising. How much saliva do you think you produce every day? Some of us are juicy. Than <laughs> juicy <others. laughs> It's all about the spit, right, the spit, not right. the base, the spit. Right, exactly. <laughs> but it's two to three liters a day okay. in the fact that we recycle one liter. So all of a sudden you stop already and just say, okay, God created this amazing, juicy mucus. <laughs> what is in it that we have not figured out that are key? And for some of you that know, our saliva contains the first digestible enzymes to allow food to really start and really go down the pathway. So I thought what was really unique is I studied it with the drop of saliva is really related to the stress response. And so if you are in that case, there's a lot of adaptations that your body need, takes and less digestion, less immune system function. What Dr. Malone took it is saying the amount of amylase, and those of you that know your food nutrition know that amylase is the enzyme that breaks down carbohydrate. So he said, based on the amount of amylase in your saliva, we can determine how much carbohydrate your blueprint, your genetic blueprint, said you should eat. Today, not exactly. like at this age, this exactly. very day, I can know exactly. how much carbohydrate I should be eating. Exactly. And Bring he, it on. Exactly. And he relates it to a particular gene that sits in our background, in our taste buds, and goes, okay, I can release this much amylase. And so this cracker test, and I know you're going to be my victim for that, <laughs> is kind of fun because you will fall into one of three pockets, he says. So amylase will break down carbohydrates. So if you have adequate, in fact, if you got genes from both of your parents and you had a multiplier effect, you will digest carbohydrate to no end. And when you, you say digest, you just mean the body's ability to utilize it Gut wise, or do you mean it actually actually metabolism and burning fat and everything else? Abs, it's all of the above. All of in it. fact, so to include, you know, yeah. in his latest book called D DNA Starter, he makes a very nice link because he said if you have the right amount of amylase and you can digest your carbohydrate, you will actually have steady blood glucose levels. Okay. And if we have steady blood glucose levels, your cells are sucking in the carbohydrate and or sugar so that you don't have a bump of inflammation. You don't have any issues with blood sugar 
and you burn your fat the way you're supposed to. Oh, awesome. That's pretty amazing. Okay. So he has three pockets. One is full carbohydrate, so he calls it full. Second is moderate, which makes sense. You're not full, you're a little bit less. And then the third group, based on the test, is he said, you know what, you need to be restricted. So if any of you have ever wondered, should I be paleo, if I should be keto, you know, how restricted should I be? This is linked literally to your digestive enzymes. And are we talking about a little bit more the starchy, high glycemic carbohydrates? No. Uh, no. Total carbohydrates? Correct. So even though the, the cracker test is what we're going to do, which is a very simple saltine cracker, so of course that's simple carbohydrate, and even right. in everything you guys write about, we would want that. He says this is talking about good quality carbohydrates. The test is just something we can do within literally 30 seconds mm -hmm. to let you know the level of carbohydrate that you can take. Okay, so then we'll talk about what what the yes. level one, two, and three Correct. really means Correct. from a nutritional standpoint. So Absolutely. you can get, okay, so we're gonna do Absolutely. this now? Yes, but what I love is it really ties to who you are and what is happening in your mouth. <laughs> yes, and your body. And it doesn't yeah. cost any blood tests, which is kind so of nice. So tell me what to do. So you're gonna divide that cracker actually in half. In half, okay. And we're gonna do the test. Do really good job. He suggests doing the test three different times. Okay. I think for this, we're gonna do it twice. Okay. Okay. And the idea behind his theory is if you have enough amylase, you're going to start chewing on this cracker and you're going to see a change of taste. And the detection of change of taste, you want to register with time. So I'm going to be gonna monitoring look, okay. your time. So I'm going to put half this cracker in my mouth. Right. But I want you to understand that for 30 seconds, you're going to chew. Okay. So I'm okay. putting and it And you're out. just going to understand. Did you go? I am just okay. right now. Go. Okay, what we're looking for is when you detect a change of taste, and then you raise your hand, and then I will mark the time, because that will determine the level of amylase that you have, which correlates to the level of carbohydrate you can handle. Are you not tasting anything at this point? Keep, keep chewing, keep chewing. You've got 10 more seconds. Keep chewing, I know you wanna swallow, but keep chewing. <laughs> Which is another thing we all eat too fast. So chewing produces good saliva. Okay. I didn't taste anything dramatically different. Okay. It stayed dry and okay. tasteless. Okay. I mean, it's a little sweet now. Okay. So it's a little sweet now. Okay. So I'm going to withhold the description until we do it again. Okay. Because sometimes that first time I found when I did it, I was like, I don't even know what kind of taste change I'm thinking. Should I have a sip of water? water? Uh, Does you it don't matter? No. Nope. no. Okay. Nope. All right. Okay, so, so yeah, I, I, and so it's really dry at the very beginning. Right. So then as I'm moving in, I'm, but I didn't feel any, I, now I feel just even now on my tongue, yes. even though I swallow a teeny bit of sweetness. Okay. But okay. I didn't, okay. So start now. Yep. Start now. Okay. Same type of thing. You're just looking for the subtlety. It is a subtlety. Think of it. Amylase as an enzyme is breaking down that carbohydrate. My mouth so, is really dry. Okay, Does that I know, matter? I know. Well, you had two back to back, so mm -hmm. yeah. So keep going, so you don't feel any kind of change of taste. Okay, okay, that's fair enough. You've only got eight more seconds. Keep going, keep going. If anything, it really shows you how quickly we want to chew, mm -hmm. right? And this really is only thirty mm, seconds. A little bit. Okay, right there. Little Bingo. bit. Little Bingo. bit. Okay. Not a lot though. Okay. So what his research has shown, and he's a scientist, he's a geneticist, and he works with inborn errors of metabolism. So he's got the full perspective. Mm -hmm. So what he says is within zero and 15 seconds, if you detect a change in that taste, mm -hmm. you have an adequate, in fact, you have a full throttle amount of amylase mm -hmm. that your diet can be full of good quality carbohydrates to the point of 50% of carbohydrates oh, okay. of your mm -hmm. calories. Mm -hmm. To the point where I don't like to be a nutritionist that talk grams, but we all look at grams anyway. Yeah, so what does that look like in grams? 250 grams for a woman. Okay. Per day. Right. And just let me know, on stats at USDA, they say that the average woman currently take in 380 to 520 grams of carbohydrate. Which is probably which, too many calories, too. Well, and truthfully, if you're running a marathon, woo, you're right in there. <laughs> if we aren't running a marathon, we're overdoing it.
Okay. So you can see that 250 initially sounds like a lot, right. but that's for a whole day, and it's half of what the average most of okay. us are taking. Okay. So you would fall into the... Second category. Correct. So you were between 15 seconds and 30. Mm -hmm. And he would say, you have the amylase level. That's a little sluggish. Right. But it's not absent. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So your amount of carbohydrate should be about 30%. So what calories. would that be for me if I, I burn probably, let's just say 1,800 to 2,000 calories a day based on my activity. Right. So if you Three, do, yeah. so then you're doing 600, 600 calories of Divided carbohydrate. Divided by four. Right. So you're about 150 to 175 grams of carbohydrate. And that's good quality. So yes. that's beans, that's legumes, that's your good fruits uh -huh, and vegetables, uh -huh. right? Okay. And mm -hmm. grains. But I don't have, I, I've cut back on grains. I mean, I'm, I don't have any issue with my weight anymore, but I have made changes yes. in the last five and 10 years, especially yes. the last five years. Yeah. So I am in more of that range, but right. I didn't used to be. I used to be a calories in versus calories out girl. So probably if I weren't having yes. cut back, I would be exactly. ballooning up. You probably would have what we say is that middle-aged middle Right? Okay. Following my diet. Right. No, exactly. <laughs> That's why you folks Which, wrote it. I mean, we honestly. wrote it with people helping them determine their carbohydrate right. threshold, but not even the cracker test. Okay, what's right. level number so three? So then that's restricted. Mm -hmm. And that's why you do here. Some people are amazing at ketogenic and paleo and carb carbohydrate restricted, or low mm -hmm. carb. Mm -hmm. And that level is if you, in a whole 30 seconds, did not notice that the change happened. Yes. Then you, he would say your amylase, your enzyme to digest carbohydrate, is not really very present. Mm -hmm. And some of that's genetic. Some of that's lifestyle, which he, has, he would admit we haven't even figured out yet. But your level needs to be res really restricted, which means that, again, from a calorie standpoint, it's about 25% of your calories. Not and that much less. Though. No, exactly. But, you're, but the threshold is different. So your grams is about a hundred, you know, under one hundred and fifty. You know, it's interesting on the Lift Thrive diet yes. in the elimination phase, the beginning, yes. because we're wanting to test and we're removing all grains, all yes. added sugar. We have a little bit of maple syrup or honey, about a tablespoon a day, in some recipes. Yes. But we have calculated the average woman is probably getting eighty to one hundred twenty yeah. grams of carbohydrate, total carbohydrate a day during the elimination phase, yes. and almost every woman sees a pretty yes big change right. now let's talk about the taste change right a person who would have reacted more quickly than me in the right. first 15 seconds would they right. have tasted sweet well is that it, what they taste well i just tasted this ever so slight sweetness at the very very yes end. you know it and that is you know the hard part is we're never trained yeah. about taste really right so honestly i have heard sweet when i've done this with people i've also heard it's a like a a molten taste, which oh, okay. I know is kind of hard to describe. So initially you put it in your mouth and it's crisp and kind of salty, yeah, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden it changes to be kind of like a bolus of not quite oatmeal, but that texture. Yes. And that's the taste. That means that your amylase has been able to attack the carbohydrate level. So we might level. need to do it a couple times just to get actually familiar exactly. with. So like... I didn't know what I'm looking for and I'm Correct. not as attuned. Correct. So I might even want to do it three or four times. Exactly. To just get exactly. a little more in tune with what are those subtle changes exactly. going on. But it's helping us know that with that timing, because we are trying to teach women, yes. we don't know what your car. So we're saying, okay, start adding a few right. grains that are exactly. working for you exactly. in after you've tested them. Right. And well, three grains work. Well, how much now yes. can you eat? And exactly. not, not to mention, of course, you're eating starchy carbohydrates and, you know, fruits and veggies and all that. Right. So this is yeah. total. I love it because it's simple. Exactly. And I love it because most of us also are trying to infuse this in children yeah. or grandchildren. And this could be really a fun detection that they can start to connect, eat, feel, perform. When I eat this, oh my gosh, I can sense it. I can feel it. And wow, if that's a signal to my body that my metabolism really is this level, then you can perform better knowing what level of carbohydrate to take. That is awesome. It's yeah. so simple. It's yeah. so interesting. I love it. And I give him all the credit, truly. Well, Thank you for your work, Dr. Mullen. Yes. <laughs> we'll put links to his uh, books in the show notes. Uh, it's just so fascinating. I love it. I hope you'll take the, the cracker, cracker test, test today <laughs> and post post in 
our um, comment section what you discovered. Right, and I will tell you, choose an unsalted saltine, which okay. this is, even yes. though it tastes as salty, it's unsalted, and ideally the one with olive oil. Yeah. So that just again, in an overall burden of toxicity, we are choosing the best. And then don't eat them except for testing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, all those notes are there. Thank you, Patty. Thank this you has been for fascinating. having me. <laughs> Stay healthy.